I don't know shit. All right, we're back at it with Wild Sitch Coaching. This com uh, this submission is from Back for Gore, longtime fan of the channel, and I figured I'd do him today. This is my third attempt at doing this because I screwed up the recording two times, so I haven't. I pretty much know what's going to go on here again because I suck at doing this crap. We're going into it anyway. Uh, you guys are doing a good job of going out and trying to scope out what's going on, but you need to. S so a lot. I'm just going to go ahead and say this ahead of time. You use your pistol a lot, starting out and going throughout. Uh, don't be afraid to use your main weapon. Oh, you have the boomer coming in. Ugh. Your reaction time right there was not the best. You were more worried about smacking the common. You could have jumped back and gotten away from the boomer. Possibly you could have at least attempted it. But now you're boarded and your team is not paying really too much attention. When someone, when one singular person gets boomed, I notice this a lot in Love for Dead. People are like, oh, that's not my problem. I didn't get boomed, so I'm just going to keep moving forward. When one person gets boomed, get the commons off of them. I don't care if it's expert or not. Bash them off if it's expert, but this is versus where friendly fire doesn't do that much damage. Feel free to unload into your friend to get at least two, three shots through. Because two to three damage of friendly fire is a hell of a lot better than 20 commons bashing your brains in. But you're kind of sticking to the pistol, going through forward. And uh, I notice this a lot too as you go on. You don't really keep an eye on your back until someone gets attacked. And that's not the best idea, especially since someone's right there. You see the charge going in and she gets hit. Yeah, that, now you're just going to let her get a shit ton of damage. The commons are stacking on top of the damage with the charger. That's one of my biggest pet peeves is when someone leaves somebody way behind. And you're just like, oh, I'm coming back. It doesn't matter. They're down. You've already wasted a health pack because you rushed ahead. When you're going forward, periodically check what's going on behind you. Stop with the tunnel vision. I know you just want to get to the end. But remember, this is a team game. This is not Call of Duty Zombies where you can go off on your own and do fuck all until you get downed. Uh, there's something called Special Infected that can pin you and make it to where you can't do anything. And if nobody helps you, you will die. And there's no coming back in verses. There's no closets to come out of. This is at Skyrim where you can adventure. You hear the hunter coming in, and you didn't really care until someone was already pinned. So you really should have just, you know, turned around. Here's something you should have done here, though. I have to rewind on this. So you notice that two people are pinned, and you saw that Ellis right there was getting hoarded. You saw that he was getting hoarded, and you saw there was commons hitting everybody, but instead, you decide to keep moving. And here's what you do while everyone else is getting hit. You stare at a door. Like, I know they could possibly spawn through the door, but that they have to break it down first. I don't know why you're staring at it. You could have helped your team, prevented a little bit more damage from not occurring. But, you know, you gotta look at that door, man. The, the fateful door. The grateful doors. You like them doors, you like Jim Morrison, so good on you, man. That door took priority over your team. I'm not trying to sound like a dick, I promise. But, uh, you kind of stick to the philosophy of pistols only when ammo, there's, I mean, there's guns and ammo everywhere in, in Left 4 Dead. It is not a precious commodity to find ammo. I'm surprised it took that person that long to, ooh, what? Okay, so if there's a boomer that just vomited on someone, the person that's vomited probably doesn't care if they pop the boomer. So get away from him, especially while they're vomiting, they can't move. So you should have backed up to shoot them instead of trying to stun them. Because while somebody's boomed, they can't tell if other people are boomed, so they're just going to go willy nilly and shoot the boomer. Stay away from them after they vomited. Try to keep the distance because, I mean, they're stationary, they can't come at you. And you already have another boomer that spawned. That is bizarre to me. I think it's because they have bots on their team, so their spawn rates are going to be a little fluctuated. I don't know if that's a word. But honestly, someone should have thrown a pipe bomb. They did throw a pipe bomb, so they kept them off of you. Selena is being a really good girl by trying to heal you. The jockey said, no, you're not healing. I mean, you have the adrenaline. So she's really low health. If I was a special infected, I would go for her. And, uh, oh, there's the charger. He's going in. He should punch her right now. Ooh. Honestly, the charger, his best course of action right there would have been to just punch her shell and then charge you 
That would have been a lot more damage. Oh, that's a good way to pay the favor back. How sweet. Good for you, back for Gore. But the Charger could have really maximized his damage because the Charger does 10 damage per punch. And that would have been a one shot to bring Rochelle down. Not Rochelle, Selena. But uh, you got a witch up here. You're taking a real big risk by doing this, but the fact that she just kind of like goes in a straight line for you to do that. You took a big risk though because she could have possibly gotten up there and downed, but get on you, got rid of the witch. I'm not going to really judge you much since you got rid of her. But uh, here's another thing with this crescendo event. Everyone's pretty formulaic on how they want to take this on at the White Elysee's healing. But, okay, you want to stare at that? Oh, okay, you're trying to get in the corner there. Uh, good for you. But uh, while you were trying to position yourself where the commons couldn't really come from behind you, you allowed Nick to get smoked and take even more damage. Like I say, I know you want to get set in your ways of how Lucky Dead should be played, but keep an eye on your team. I would not be panicking to get where the commons would die behind you if they try to climb up. I would just figure out how can I help my team right now and then we'll figure it out from there. But this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves. During these crescendo events where it's just an endless gauntlet of commons, what you do here is you just keep going and going and going forward. You never look behind you whatsoever. You're just so tunnel visioned to keep going forward that you're not really keeping an eye on your team. Honestly, I would have pulled the baseball bat out here too because it's just better for clearing out boards that are relentless to come in. That hunter is going to get someone. That someone is you. If the charger would come in and get uh, coach right now, oh, if he would have been a bit sooner, that would have been really bad for y'all. You need to turn around right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You saw, uh, you saw in the third person perspective as you got out of being hunted that coach got charged. Let's look at it right there. You saw that he got hit as you're getting up. See right there? But instead of turning around to help him, you're like, no, I know you're charged, but I, I need to get to the safe room. I just need to get the safe room. You have 30 health. You can take a good amount of damage. But you're sitting in here, you're like, okay, I'll grab the health kit. That's okay, but you really should have helped out Coach, especially since this board is endless. Because anything could have happened there. Nick's having a hard time getting around the tent there. You see that he's having a hard time, you're like, meh, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna go in the safe room and just chill. You need to, you got, all three of you are leaving him behind. You're leaving him for dead. And now you guys are like, oh, oh yeah, my bad. It's a good thing he was at green health. Honestly, he should have thrown the Molotov and just sped right through it. That would have been the best course of action there for him. But, uh, yeah, you guys rushed to the safe room and you're allowed Nick to get hit. A lot of bad stuff could have happened, especially since you and Coach could have been one shot by one charger. You spent the time in the safe room. If you were going to be in the safe room, you should have just healed instead of just being like, oh, what's going on here? Not calling you stupid or anything, just saying. Keep keep an eye out for your team. Back for Gore, you had two situations where you could have helped somebody out, but you were so focused on trying to get to where you were. Yeah, that happened a lot, actually. You were so you have this thing where you're focused on going forward or going to an objective in your mind that you don't think of helping your team until they're already hit. And that's the primary prerogative of the infected is to get those hits and cause all this chip damage until someone eventually goes down then it snowballs but anyways we're gonna go into the infected see how this translates into the infected side so as a boomer I would not be spawning there it's not the best idea to boom right as they get out of the safe room especially since you don't quite get the arc to get Ellis there but keep in mind if you boom near the safe room if the survivors are smart, which they're not really smart here to go out in the open and allow themselves to be, you know, susceptible to the elements, Coach is going to back into the spit, and he's just going to take a shit ton of spit damage. But a smart team, if they get boomed right out of the safe room door, they will go back in, funnel in all the commons in the surrounding area, and you've actually helped the survivors because you've made them into a bio bomb that they can, you know, effectively use to their advantage. Hunter, I don't know what he was doing there pouncing around, but honestly, I would spawn on top of that building on the right, but you go on top of the bumper cars building instead. That's fine, but when it comes to situations, you want to get the person in the back, but I'd, I'm not a big fan of this spawn. But 
coming up here in a second, you'll see that it actually works in his favor because Ellis starts acting like you when he comes to the gameplay. He rushes forward, thinking he's invincible, and then that doesn't quite occur. He gets smoked, and it screws over his team because now they have to rush forward, and they get tunnel vision because they're like, I gotta save him, I gotta save him. Uh, Charger could have helped out there, especially since they're in that long tunnel way. Could have easily just made this a lot worse, but I guess he's off doing something else. He's a sports... I don't know if the split screen or is just playing on two different controllers. But, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, that happens a lot in this game. Uh, Dick Knows Silhouette is coming into attack. He got the actual hit. I don't know what Rochelle's doing. She's not really paying any mind. But uh, the Boomer could easily spawn on top of the bumper cars and get the boom, but she's going to come in from the long distance and she's actually going to get the boom off. If I was her, I would have gone on top of the bumper cars, boomed, and then just waddled away. would have been an easy way to get away. Uh, the jockey's getting away. You need to pounce. They're both trying to shoot. You need to pounce now. Uh, you waited a little bit too long on that pounce, buddy. Uh, you should have pounced a little bit sooner. And when it comes to special effects, you're trying to help each other out to maximize your damage. But you waited a little bit too long, and it gave them time to shoot the jockey off. And now that the person that was jockeyed, they weren't boomed, so they could have easily just shot you down, and that's what happened. So you hesitated, and it kind of screwed the jockey over. Not saying it's your fault, but you should have attacked a little bit sooner. Hesitation is what leads to death in this game. So don't always worry to hesitate, though. There's some situations where hesitation isn't too bad, but in that situation, it... Uh, could have been useful to just attack as soon as possible. But now we have this open area. Uh, let's see how you're going to effectively use your spawn. You kind of spawned a little bit too soon there because the jockey is one of the loudest affected because he constantly is loud. But you're using this opportunity to actually help the charger out. You're like, okay, charger's going to attack. They have to come this way. I'm going to help them out. But coach went to the side seeing that coming because keep it. Oh, good, good idea. Keep in mind, when you spawn, you make a lot of sounds. You want to, The second you spawn, you want to be able to attack. So just don't freak out and spawn as soon as possible. Wait until they get really close, then spawn, then attack. I uh, don't know what you're doing there as a jockey. I would have gone around the corner and tried to get my jockey back. You were at low health, and scratching's not really going to help. Charger's coming in. He's going to pounce. And this is where I don't know what happened to all these people, but this book takes them all out. So that's it. Uh, not much I could judge from your infected side just because the survivor side was pretty kind of bad. Not kind of bad, pretty bad. As an infected, just don't hesitate and just see the situation and go for it. Go balls deep, baby. That's fine. Uh, but I didn't have much to judge. Uh, your spawn points weren't the best. Booming right out of the safe room is not always the best idea because they'd always come back. But like I said, they're not the best survivors, so they just kind of went outside freaking out. The smoker spawn, eh. You could have spawned on top of the building that's closer to the safe room and gone for the person in the back, but you got lucky because Ellis rushed ahead. Now, as a survivor, I have a lot more to critique you about. You tended to just run ahead and not keep an eye on your six. That's my biggest pet peeve when it comes to Left 4 Dead, is people that rush ahead and then just kind of don't pay mind to your team until they're already him or get incapacitated. That's not good because you're trying to keep your health healthy until you get to the safe room. So keep an eye on your teammates. Uh, you get tunnel vision when it comes to doing objectives, trying to go... I don't know what the hell that door thing was. You could have helped your teammates out. Uh, but just keep in mind, I know, you ha I know you have to get to the safe room, but you're not getting to the safe room by yourself. So keep an eye on your teammates. Uh, this submission came from Back for Gore. Thank you for the submission. If you want to submit a kit, uh, footage to me, it's pretty easy, but keep in mind, it has to be 720p or higher. I do not want low-res stuff that is not fun to look at. I don't want to hear it about it in the comment section. Uh, make sure it's 10 to 15 minutes long. Uh, I just want to keep it above 10 minutes, mostly because that's how monetization works in this day and era. Xbox or PC is fine. I don't care either way. And if you want to submit it to me, you can email me, wildsuchgaming at yahoo.com. And just keep in mind, it has to be versus, and I want Infected and Survivor side. Both of those have to be in there. And they both have to accumulate to 10 minutes or higher. And uh, like I said, wildsuchgaming at yahoo.com. Email me your footage. It could be OneDrive or whatever. 
And if you don't, if you're not tech savvy with PC stuff, computer stuff, if you have an Xbox, you can easily do that too. You can record your footage and send it to me to my gamer tag at Zackass2010, Z A C K A Z Z two one two zero one zero. Trying to put a lot of words into my mouth right now. And uh, just when you send me the footage on Xbox, make sure the message says "While Switch Coaching Footage." I get a lot of messages. Uh, thank you again for Back for Gore for sending me your footage. And uh, follow me on Twitter, wow, underscore such, underscore gaming. And uh, you can keep up to date on everything. Follow my main channel. And like always, I'm Zachass, a.k.a. Wow Such Gaming. Never forget to, you need to pounce. A little bit too late. Stay well. <laughs>